I'm in the process of attempting to repair this Hazeltine 2000 smart terminal. In the video so far in this series I've worked through a number of issues. I've gone through the chassis, the power supply, the CRT monitor, rectified a few faults and uh, we've now got to the point where we can start seeing characters on the screen, we can edit them and in the editing mode, the batch mode, it seems to be working. We can transmit the data through to the remote terminal uh, that I'm running on the PC. Um, there is, uh, however, still a number of faults I need to look at and in this video we're going to address the next one. And in order to show you what the fault is, I'll just move the camera and uh, try and give you some idea as to what the problem is. I've got the scope set up so that it's monitoring the RX and TX lines on the serial connection. We'll power up the terminal. Wait for the screen to come to life. And as you can see it's come up with the usual random collection of characters. So we'll clear that. And notice that if I start typing characters, I've got the terminal set to half duplex. If I start typing characters, they appear on the screen and we can see on the yellow trace, which is the TX line on the serial connection, we are successfully sending those characters through to the PC. Let's turn the brightness down there a bit. Uh, but the problem I have to rectify is if I try and send characters through from the PC to the terminal, nothing appears on the screen and nothing goes through to the RAM. I've checked it with the scope, there's nothing going through to memory. So I've created a simple text file that contains nothing but uppercase A characters. I've got the terminal set to 110 volts, so it'll, it'll run fairly slowly but we should still see some data. We should see the data coming through on the serial port on the RX line and in theory we should see the uppercase A's appearing on the terminal screen. So I'll try sending those through now. And as you can see, the data's coming through on the RX line. We can see it on the scope. But there is nothing appearing on the monitor on the terminal. So obviously there's something wrong here in this mode. When you boot up the terminal, it should come up in RX mode. And the RX or the receive light is on, on the uh, keyboard. So it should be in receive mode, but it's obviously not working. So I'll relocate the camera and we'll decide how we're going to go about trying to locate the source of this problem. So the way I'm going to go about this is I already have one of the cards on a riser and that is card B16. Now B16 is the in-out card. It's essentially the, the card that takes the TTL uh, logic symbols, converts them into RS232 levels and does the reverse. So it's just really some simple interface logic with some line drivers and line receivers. And because the overall way this operates gets quite complex because various functions can stop and start the uh, serial interface depending on what the mode is that you're using. Um, I decided I would go ahead and actually reverse engineer this card as well. So, and this is what I ended up with. The important part here is bottom right hand corner we have the RX coming in, follow it along and we end up at pin 6 of U12. So we'll put the scope on pin 6 of U12 and make sure that the signal is getting through from the RS232 input through to the board, make sure we haven't got a break in the serial cable or the back plane. So that's uh, trying to avoid getting in the way of the scopes, that's U12 pin 6 and we should see the same data on that pin as we're seeing on the incoming cable and we are, that's actually getting to that point. So we don't have a break in the cable, that's all working fine and so the next thing we want to look at is the output of that line driver. So if we follow it through, so it's this IC here, we want to look at pin 2. So that's essentially the data comes in here goes through the, the line receiver rather and uh, we should see the output on pin 2 at TTL levels. So again that's U12 pin 2 and as you can see 
there's nothing there it's just continually high now, according to the spec sheet for these devices these are 8 T16s and according to the spec sheet if the strobe line is held in the low state then um, the output will be held high so we want to look at pin 3 and we can see that is low so that uh, IC is effectively disabled so the line driver is turned off so if we follow that through that's uh, going it's fed from U5 pin 3 so if we go and look at that it's an AND gate so U5 pin 3 make sure they're into breaking the board and it's low there if we look at the inputs to that AND gate two input AND gate pin 1 is low and pin 2 is high okay so what we have is U5 it's a two input NAND gate pin 2 is high and that goes off the board to some other uh, logic that uh, controls the receive mode and the second input to that gate is fed from U3 pin 10 so we'll check that and see what the state is that's a 7404 and uh, pin 10 we need it to be high and that means that uh, pin 11 needs to be low so we'll look at that so that's this IC I'm trying to avoid getting in your way again so pin 10 is low pin 11 is high so that gate is actually working but um, the input is uh, in the wrong state instead you can hear this whistling it um, doesn't like me messing with it in various ways it tends to resonate so uh, unfortunately you will have to just put up with the noise okay so we know this is in the wrong state so that's fed now from a, another line receiver and we'll check pin 12 on that uh, line receiver to see if it's actually enabled so pin 12 and again that's U12 so we want to monitor pin 12 it's the green trace incidentally that we're looking at and that input is high so that line drive is actually enabled so it thinks it's in receive mode it, as far as it's concerned this should be enabled so as with most um, serial um, systems like this there are certain complications in trying to use it and it looks like that's one of the things we have here now this um, terminal the Hazeltine 2000 was really intended to be hooked up to something like a modem so it has various control lines and additional inputs on the serial line so almost certainly that line receiver is expecting to get a signal from a modem so what I want to do now is find out where that goes on the modem uh, cable to turn the unit off we'll get the meter I'll just move the camera so you can see what I'm doing and I've got this kind of breakout connector on the serial cable so I can get to the various connections and we want to look at the input to that line driver and see where it's fed from so it's pin 9 of U12 and we'll see if that goes through to the serial input which I suspect it does okay I've got one probe on pin 9 of that line receiver and we'll now start going through and see if any of the serial connections are connected to that pin and okay that one is so almost certainly it's expecting a signal from the modem it thinks it's supposed to be connected to as I don't have that modem and it's not a um, hardware handshaking issue by the way I have tried setting hardware X on X off and non and it makes no difference uh, that line is not controlled in the normal kind of scheme of things with standard RS232 but what I can do is isolate that input to the terminal and try pulling it high so we'll try doing that next I'll power the terminal back up I'll move the camera further across so you can see uh, what's going on and we'll try uh, enabling that line in effect and hopefully that will enable the serial input so we're continuously sending A's 
of the case A's through to the terminal and I've isolated that input to the line receiver and what we'll try doing now is fooling it into thinking that line is active and the terminal is now receiving the characters and they are the correct character so that appears to be what's wrong with this it just it's just expecting oh it's configured to be connected through to a, a slightly different type of serial interface than what we're actually using with the uh, PC emulator um, but what I'll do I'll put a link on the uh, actual board um, because this is going to be used in uh, RS232 mode and um, it will just be easier to have it configured to run like that so I'll get the link fitted and then we'll see if we can send some more data through to the terminal and hopefully that will be another issue dealt with not a fault this time just really a, a configuration and understanding how this terminal is supposed to be used I've got the card refitted to the terminal I've put the link on the card to try and make sure that lines enabled and I'll now try and send another file from the PC As you can see we are now one step closer to having a fully functional terminal. In the next video we'll look at the next fault but we are getting to the point now where we can start trying to do some uh, full tests on this, try to control some other devices, make use of the uh, advanced features of this terminal and um, hopefully you'll find those videos interesting. It's a very interesting terminal, it's got uh, some very nice features in it and uh, once we've got all the bugs ironed out, um, hopefully it will be a very useful addition.